The rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disorder of joints. It's a long-term disorder that primarily affects joints and it's kind of a chronic inflammatory disorder. Here the autoimmune refers to that the immune system produces antibodies that attack your own cells. It results in warm, swollen and painful joints. It affects joints that includes wrists, hands, knees, ankles, elbow, hips, shoulders and cervical spine. We see the rheumatoid arthritis is divided into three important phases. The first phase is initiation phase, that's non-specific inflammation. Second phase is amplification phase, that occurs in synovium. And third phase is chronic inflammation. Let's discuss the initiation phase first. This condition starts with two primary factors or risk factors genetic factors and environmental factors. The genetic factors include genes that are involved in rheumatoid arthritis are HLA-DRB1 and HLA-DRB4. Whereas the environmental factors include the cigarette smoking and pathogens. We see both HLA-DRB1 and cigarette smoking can lead to RF production independently. This RF can target other healthy cells and destroy them. Then we have PTPN22 and PADI14 gene. The single nucleotide polymorphism in these genes are also the risk factors for rheumatoid arthritis. The PTPN22, PADI14 along with HLA-GRP1 and secret smoking shows interactive effect where we get the ACPA production under these risk factors that's anti stridulated protein antibody. This ACPA, that's anti stridulated protein antibody, targets self-modified antigens in our body, which we are going to see later on in this video. Furthermore, we see in this rheumatoid arthritis, the risk factors drive the citrullination of proteins like type 2 collagen, vomentin, and flagellin. Here we see in the citrullination of proteins, we have the normal amino acid chain of any protein having arginine at this position. Then during the course of citrullination, the arginine amino acid is replaced by citrulline. We see in type 2 collagen, PPAD enzyme from P. gingivalis drives citrullination of collagen. And we get the modified type 2 collagen. Second, we have the vimentin. It's acted upon by PAD2 enzyme and gets citrullinated. And third is plagiarin. It's acted upon by PAD3 enzyme and gets citrullinated. Now these citrullinated proteins are kind of a modified proteins and ACPA which are also generated by some risk factors targets these citrullinated proteins and launch the immune attack. And in the meantime the immune cells no longer recognize these proteins. We see in this diagram we have the APC that's antigen presenting cell, type 2 collagen and vimentin. And it must be noted here that type 2 collagen and vimentin are modified or citrullinated proteins. So we see the APC that's antigen presenting cell comes in and picks up the antigen from these proteins. Then APC goes to the CD4 T helper cells and presents the antigen towards them. So upon antigen presentation, the CD4 T cells becomes activated. And these CD4 T cells stimulate the B cells and drives proliferation of B cells as shown in the animation. So all these B cells are stimulated by CD4 T cells and gets differentiated into plasma cells. These plasma cells generates antibodies for the self antigens. So we can also call these antibodies as autoantibodies. Now moving towards the second phase that's amplification phase. First let's have a look on normal synovial joint as shown in the diagram. Now after initiation phase, the antibodies and ACPA have started moving in towards the synovial joint as shown in the diagram. We see the plasma cell is secreting autoantibodies, rheumatoid factors plus ACPA. All these factors or elements targets these citrullinated proteins. Here in this diagram we can see the autoantibodies which is IgM. We have rheumatoid factor which is IgG antibody and ACPA. All these form an immune complex, which drives complement binding, that's activation of complement system, which ultimately leads to intense inflammation in the joints shown in the diagram. Now moving towards the last phase, that's chronic phase, which starts with the T-cell secreting cytokinase. 
like INF gamma and IL-17, which further stimulates secretion of TNF alpha and IL-1 and 6. So under these conditions, the synovial cell proliferates as shown in the diagram, and there is a pannus formation, which means there is abnormal growth of tissue, and we get the angiogenesis also. This is followed by cartilage breakdown and tissue erosion, shown in the diagram. In these events, we also have some signaling pathways getting activated abnormally, like rankle pathway, which produces osteoclasts, shown in the diagram. These osteoclasts in the synovium drive breakdown of bone. So all in all, we see the synovium joint has been degraded by these immune events and conditions. So this is what the rheumatoid arthritis is and its pathophysiology. I hope you like the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Do consider supporting my work on Patreon or YouTube and make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks.